This is going to be the book of Hebrews, verse by verse, chapter 1. And we're going to talk about the subject of how we know that Jesus is God. A lot of people I talk to, they have never even thought about and don't even know that Jesus Christ is God. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, no, no, he's, he's not God, he's just his son. Just because they're not really... They don't know any better to deny that Jesus is God. They just can't comprehend that since he's God's son, he's also God himself. But in Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time passing to the fathers by the prophets. So how do we know Jesus is God? Number one, the prophets wrote of him. John 5.46 says, Jesus actually says in John 5.46, For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So Jesus Christ said himself that Moses wrote of him. And you can go back into the Old Testament and see prophecies concerning the Lord Jesus Christ thousands of years before he came in the flesh. So verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. At sundry times, that is, uh, several times and in diverse manners, that is, different manners, spake in time past unto the fathers, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He spake unto them by prophets. He spake unto all these men by the prophets in the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to the prophets using dreams and visions before the Bible was complete. At Numbers 12, 6 says, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. However, now we have a more sure word of prophecy. The Bible is a more sure word than any dream or vision. And... In the day we are in, when someone claims they received a dream or vision from the Lord, then you can label it as not of God. And most of the videos you see like that are on the internet would say, I just had a dream or a vision and such and such is going to happen on this date. That is just people making things up to get fame. That's all that is. Because God doesn't speak to people through dreams and visions like he did with people in the Bible. In the Old Testament, that is how the Lord spoke to the prophets, the ones that wrote about the Lord Jesus Christ. They wrote about him, and Jesus said in John five thirty nine, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So when Jesus said those words, when he said, These are they... They are they which testify of me. All he had was the Old Testament. This shows that the Old Testament shows us the Lord Jesus Christ. Now verse 2 of Hebrews 1. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, but whom also he made the worlds. Notice it says, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. This shows that when Jesus Christ was walking in the flesh on earth, that was the last days. However, when the Jews rejected Jesus Christ that final time, the Lord postponed the last days with the church age, and the last days will pick up again when the church leaves. Notice that when the Jews rejected Jesus Christ during the stoning of Stephen, Stephen saw the Lord standing on the right hand of the Father instead of sitting in Acts 7.55. So Jesus was standing because the Jews, if they would have accepted him as Messiah, he would have came back then and the church age would have never taken place. That is a butterfly effect if you've ever seen one. So the last days have been postponed with the church age. So Hebrews 1, 2, Within these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, but whom also he made the worlds. So how do we know Jesus is God? 
the Old Testament saints prophesied about him, clearly showing you that he is God. And number two, he made the worlds. It says in verse two, but whom also he made the worlds. Well, witnessing to men, I'm always shocked to find out that many people, as I said, do not know that Jesus Christ is God. It is an unusual, unusual for them to tell me that they don't believe he is God, but rather only his son. What they don't realize is that the fact that he is God's son also proves he's God. As it says in John 5, 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And the Gospel of John shows us that Jesus Christ made everything. And how can you make everything if you're not God? John 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word. And you know the Word is Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The Apostle Paul lets us know that Jesus Christ Himself isn't responsible or he is responsible for the creation. He's responsible for every piece of nature that you see. He made all of it. Colossians 1, 15 through 17, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. So Hebrews 1, 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, but whom also he made the world. So Jesus Christ is an heir because he is going to inherit everything. He will sit on the throne in Jerusalem, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and this will be in the Millennial Kingdom. Hebrews 1 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. See, he he keeps everything together himself. If it wasn't for him, everything would just blow up. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So why else? Should we believe Jesus Christ is God because he is the express image? Notice that phrase, brightness of his glory. <clears throat> that puts you in mind of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is coming back in the brightness of his glory. Malachi 4.2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. That phrase son of righteousness in malachi 4 2 the son is spelled s-u-n with the capital s it's referring to jesus christ that's the brightness of his glory it's like the sun or much brighter than revelation 1 15 and 16 his feet like undefined brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So the Lord Jesus Christ is so bright that it would knock a man over just to see his glory. And the reason that John was able to look at Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 1 is because of his garment. In Revelation 1.13 it says, He was clothed with a garment down to the foot. When he appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus, Paul wasn't so fortunate. But Paul ended up blinded by Jesus Christ. And in Acts 26, 13, Paul described the, uh, Jesus Christ as above the brightness of the sun. So, he, he, shine, he can shine up a pitch black room. He can shine up the world if people would let him. But men love darkness rather than light. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 41, One star differeth from another star in glory. And Daniel 12, 3 says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the sun. 
when, when you get saved and you get Jesus in you and you let him let it show that he's in you, you're going to shine like he does. The better you serve Jesus Christ down here, the brighter you're going to be in eternity. It compares you to a star in eternity. And the bright, uh, the the more you shine for Jesus down here, the brighter you're going to be when you get there. And this is why you wear clothes in eternity. A lot of people have asked the question, do we have to wear clothes in heaven? Well, if you didn't, then the men in natural bodies wouldn't be able to look at you when we get to eternity. Now, see the phrase in Hebrews 1.3, the express image of his person. Jesus Christ is the exact image of God. He is God manifested in the flesh. In 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So Jesus Christ is the image of God and the brightness of his glory. And the devil is doing all he can to try and keep the Lord from shining unto you, as it says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So Colossians 1.15, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Uh, the devil wants to keep you away from that. He wants to keep you away from the image of the invisible God. <clears throat> but God is a spirit. And John 1.18 says, No man hath seen God at any time. And then in John 14.9, Jesus said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. This is because Jesus Christ is the image of God. If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. So what does God look like? What does Jesus Christ look like now? Revelation 1 gives us the answer, and Revelation 1, 12 through 16 says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had at his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. That's what Jesus Christ looks like in his glorified body. Hebrews 1.3, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So why is Jesus God? Because he upholds all things. How could anyone but God uphold all things? Colossians 1, 17 says, he, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So he upholds all things by the word of his power. The only reason you and your house and your wife and your kids and the world and the universe hasn't blown up is because the Lord Jesus Christ keeps it all together. It was his word that created everything, and it is his word that keeps it together. That's how we know he's God. In Genesis 1, 1 through 3, you see the Godhead at work. You see Jesus Christ in the first three verses of your Bible, which says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, now here is Jesus Christ, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. When it says, and God said, that is the word, the living word, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis 3, 8 says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So why does it say they heard the voice of the Lord God walking? That's because... It is the Word. It is the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't born in a man just born in a manger to a virgin one day. He was here way before that happened. He's always been here and always will be. So Hebrews 1 3, who, who being the brightness of his glory. 
in the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So how else do we know he's God? Because he paid our sin debt. He purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. How else could he pay for our sins if he wasn't God? God is the only one who could live righteous, and Jesus Christ lived a 100% righteous life. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have none in high priests which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 1 Peter 2.22, Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. So there had to be a perfect sacrifice for sin. It had to be a lamb without blemish and without spot. And Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ purged our sins, not with fire, but with his own blood. Purged as in purified and cleansed. He purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law. Here's that word again. Purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. All right, now Hebrews 1, 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So why is he God? Why is Jesus God? Because he has a more excellent name. And Ecclesiastes 7, 1 says, A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death and the day of one's birth. Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So Jesus Christ is the only person who can truly say he has an excellent name. When you think of the names of other men in the Bible, you can think of something that they did wrong. When you think of the name of Jesus Christ, you can't think of anything he did wrong because he did nothing wrong. That name is a more excellent name. That name is the name that Billions of people sing about in the world every day. It is a more excellent name. In Acts 4.12 it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Philippians 2, nine through 11 Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus Christ not only has a more excellent name than me and you, but also a more excellent name than the angels. And there is an innumerable company of angels, according to Hebrews 12.22. And Psalms 147.4 talks about how the Lord telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. Stars many times refer to angels in the Bible. So each angel of the innumerable company of angels has a name, and still Jesus Christ rises above all their names. The verse in Hebrews 1.4 says, He hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. This is because the Father gave him his name, and what his name means. His name means Jehovah saves. A much more superior, superior name than the angels have. And Jesus himself created the angels. Colossians 1.16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So he created the visible and invisible, principalities and powers. It only makes sense that the one who created all things is better than his creation. How would it make sense if the creation was better than the creator? But Hebrews 1, 5 says, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. So what else makes Jesus God? The fact that he is born of God. Jesus Christ as the man Christ Jesus was the first person born of God. He didn't have an earthly father. His mother was found with child of the Holy Ghost in Matthew 1.18. The virgin birth. Mary was a virgin, and that is a fundamental to the faith. It's a foundational truth. In Hebrews 1.5, it's 
trying to get you to understand the fact that Jesus Christ is better than the angels. God never said to the angels, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And many will use this as proof that the sons of God in the Old Testament cannot be referring to angels, seeing as how they aren't called sons. However, this leaves out the fact that the verse said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Jesus Christ is a begotten son. The angels are not begotten sons, but rather just direct creations from God. Another way some Bible believers look at the term son of God in the Old Testament is by coming to the conclusion that because of Hebrews 1, 5, the angels can't be the sons of God. However, they still don't make the sons of God in Genesis 6 to be the godly line of Seth or teacher refers to saved people. <clears throat> They, some people teach that the sons of God are different um, angelic-like creatures entirely, which they could be, but I don't think that Hebrews 1, 5 proves that the angels aren't sons of God because they are sons, they're just not begotten sons. And the verse said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. God has never said that to an angel and he wouldn't because they aren't begotten. In Hebrews 1, 6, it says, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. So Jesus Christ is the first begotten. This proves men in the Old Testament did not have the new birth. A man cannot get born again without believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must put your faith on Jesus Christ, his bloody death, burial, and resurrection to be saved. And Hebrews 1, 6 says, And let all the angels of God worship him. So we know he's God because he accepts worship. In uh, Matthew 2, 11, 8, 2, 9, 18, 14, 33, 15, 25, and 28, 9, you'll see Jesus Christ in the flesh accepting worship. If he isn't God manifested in the flesh, then why did he accept worship from men? He's the only one worthy of worship. In Acts 10.25, Cornelius bows down to worship Peter. And it says, But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. You won't find Jesus saying that because Jesus Christ is the God-man. Hebrews 1.7, And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Notice it says, His angels. God owns the angels. It isn't the other way around. For some reason, men start worshiping angels, as it talks about in Colossians 2.18. But the only person you need to be worshiping is the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need to be bowing down to any man because they're a different race than you. You don't need to be kneeling before these people asking for forgiveness for something that you didn't even do to them. That's blasphemy. You're not supposed to kneel down and bow down to men. The devil is a counterfeiter. He wants everything God has, and according to Hebrews 1 and verse 7, God has angels. So the devil has angels, as it says in Matthew 25, 41. God has ministers, and the devil has ministers, as you can see in 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. And verse 7 says, The Lord's ministers are a flame of fire. They are on fire for God. If Jesus isn't God, then why would these powerful beings, the angels, worship him? Hebrews 1 8, but unto the Son he saith, The throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. How do we know Jesus is God? The Father calls him God. The God the Father calls God the Son God. He says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So the Father called Jesus Christ God. He says he has a throne. And the Lord Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. And all the world will come to worship him or else. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. His throne is forever. He says a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Isaiah 32 one says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. And princes shall rule in judgment. So this is why the kingdom will be perfect. You want to live in this kingdom. The king rules in righteousness. No drugs, no alcohol, no sex trafficking or any immoral thing will be going on 
because you have a perfect king running things. Genesis 49.10 says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, and Jesus Christ is the line of the tribe of Judah. The scepter has to do with his royal power and authority. Hebrews 1.9, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So Jesus Christ loved righteousness. He hates iniquity. True love hates. If he didn't hate iniquity, then he wouldn't have love righteousness. If you love babies, then you hate abortion. If you love the Bible, then you hate it when a man corrects the Bible. If you love your brother in Christ, then you hate it when somebody talks about him. Hebrews 1.9, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So the oil of gladness is the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ has it more than anybody. John 3.34 says, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. So Jesus Christ had all the Holy Spirit because he's God. God anointed him with the oil of gladness above the fellows, above any man in the Bible, like Aaron and the priests. Hebrews 1, 10 through 12. And now, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as doth the garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. So what's another reason we know is God's? Because he is eternal. Once again, as we talked about before, the Lord was here in the beginning. He is before all things, and it was the Lord Jesus Christ who laid the foundations of the earth. Amos 4.13 says, For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and createth the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness, and treadeth upon the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. Psalms 19.1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Verse 11 shows us that the world and the heavens shall perish, however the Lord will remain, because Jesus Christ is eternal. One day there will be a new heaven and a new earth. However, Jesus Christ will remain the same. Hebrews 1.11-12, They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they shall all wax old as doth the garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. So the Lord is so superior, superior to his creation that he can roll it up like a piece of notebook paper and throw it in the trash and not miss. He is so superior to the earth and heavens that he wears them as clothes. Psalms 102, 25 through 27 it says, Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years have no end. When you come home and change clothes, you take them and throw them on the floor. That's what Jesus Christ could do to this universe. That's how powerful he is. And one of these days, the Lord is going to change his clothes. He's going to take off the heavens and the earth and put new ones on. He wears the creation as clothes. And, it, and he can change them just as quick as you can take off your shirt and pants. Isaiah 40, 22 says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain. And spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Hebrews 1, 13 through 14. But the witch of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This chapter has sh showed you that Jesus is better than the angels. That's what the book of Hebrews is about, is Jesus being better than everybody and everything. Everybody wants to talk about who's the greatest and everything. Well, Jesus is the greatest and everything. Are they not all ministering spirits sit forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? To sum up the whole chapter, the main thing we get from this is the Lord is showing us that he is superior to the angels. 
The Lord, Lord never said to the angels, sit on my right hand. The angels are ministering spirits. They minister to the Lord. That is, they serve him. The Lord doesn't serve them, and they don't have any rule. Hebrews 1.14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? As born-again believers in the body of Christ, we don't inherit salvation. So this, this isn't talking about you. The Lord gave it to us as a free gift. However, there are some people in the future who do inherit salvation. In eternity, when people in natural bodies are there populating the Lord's kingdom, they're going to be eating off of a tree. In Revelation 22, 2, it says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And then in verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do eat, do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in the, through the gates into the city. So the children of those in eternity who ate off the tree, become heirs of salvation. Things go back to God's original plan that he had for Adam and Eve in the garden. But this has been Hebrews chapter 1, and we've talked about how we know that Jesus is God. And I hope I've got you completely convinced that Jesus Christ is not just man, but he's fully God and fully man.